Hey, good afternoon. It's Jim from JagFX.com. It is Sunday, the 31st of July, 2022. This is my weekly analysis video where we have a look at the Forex pairs. I'm trading on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence trading methods from my books. Uh, this video is coming to you from Non Pen, Cambodia. First one for the week. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'll be here. At least until about the 11th of September. I have to head to Vietnam for a wedding, so. Let's see, here we go. All right, let's get into it. First up, thanks for watching the video, girls and guys. If you do like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, I've had a couple of rants in the last couple of weeks on the Facebook group and Telegram channels, you may have noticed. Look, there's nothing personally directed at anyone. It's just, it's just getting a few things off my chest and just trying to make life a little bit easier for all people, all of us concerned, you know, like... Um, I think the last one was about people looking for reasons not to take a trade. You know, sometimes you just got to pull the trigger, pull the trigger. You know, if it turns out to be a winner, good. If it doesn't, so what? It's just, just the way it is with trading. You can't win every trade. Look at the famous, the famous turtles. If you don't know who the turtles are, Google them, have a look. Famous trading group, uh, Ron Dennis and his partner, um, their, their win rate was around... Um, Oh, it was less than 30%. So that means they were losing 70% of their trades and they are multi squillionaires and most of them to this day are still trading big funds. So so you will have losing trades, people. That's just a part of trading. All right, let's get into it. Enough of my ranting. All right, so first up, normally we have a look at the news. What's the week ahead? This is a, this is a economic calendar, free economic calendar from Forex Factory. Um, you, you can filter it to set it up to what you what pairs you want to look at, what type of news you want to look at. I'm mainly interested in the red ones. The red ones are the high impact events, right? So if you want to know what the news actually refers to, just come over here and click on here. There's a holiday, like for example in Australia on Monday is a holiday. Uh, I'm not even sure what the holiday's for, and I'm in Australia. <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> But you can click on that, and that just tells you what the news actually refers to. It's a big week in news, right? Let's just go through it quickly. Monday, first thing, high impact is out of the US. ISM manufacturing, not a big move, but just be careful. Right, then it, all right, here we go. We're right in the, all right, Tuesday gets busy. US, sorry, US, Australian interest rate news. Uh, they're expecting a rate rise. There's no no information on Forex Factory at the moment, but they are expecting a rate rise. Be careful. That is a big mover. That can be a mover on the Aussie pairs, so just be careful. Uh, Jolts, job openings from the US also on Tuesday. So that's the big one on Tuesday. New Zealand on Wednesday, employment or unemployment numbers, depends which way you want to read it. So employment numbers from, on, from New Zealand on Wednesday. So that's another thing to be aware of if trading NZ pairs. Now this mainly applies to day traders or people on the lower time frames. This is stuff that you should know about. Uh, Wednesday, what do we got? ISM services PMI out of the US. Another market, uh, not, a, not a huge market mover, but it can be. Right, big ones, Thursday, UK, or Great Britain. UK uh, interest rates, they're expecting a rate rise there. There's no information here at the moment, but they are expecting a rate rise. Be careful of trading the GP, GP, hang on, Great British Pound. You know what I mean. If you're trading the pound, be, pound pairs, be careful around this time. All right, it just doesn't probably get any quieter this week. It's a, it's a big week, like I said. Um, coming into Friday, employment numbers. These are the big ones. Not so much the Canadian ones, but they are, uh, if you're trading the, the CAD, any CAD pairs, be careful. It's employment, number, unemployment. They move markets. Here's the big one. US is the non-farm payrolls or the old employment numbers out of the US. So that's another big one. It's first Friday of the month. Friday, first Friday of the month. So the Canadian and US employment numbers. Big week of news, folks. Be careful. Big new, big week, big week. Interest rates, not employment numbers. They are market movers. All right, so let's get on to it. First up, let's have a look at this Word document that I prepared. You will see my chart shortly in Trading View. There's a lot of different lines, a lot of different colors, a lot of different indicators. If you've never watched my videos before, you might be a bit confused. 
I generally use the same setup. It's from the high probability in the divergence trading books, so there's nothing different there. Uh, you'll see three moving averages. Here's the settings for them. You'll see a QMP filter, which are red and green dots on the chart. Um, so that's that's what they are. You'll see red lines, green lines, blue lines, grey vertical lines. Normally all my cells are in red, all my buys are in blue. Stop losses are normally a dashed, I mean a dotted red horizontal line. And my big numbers like parity or round numbers are designated by a green dashed horizontal line. So those green dashed horizontal lines are just some sort of big number or something that's fairly, um, uh, what do you call it, consistent or something that's been you know, re irrelevant, something relevant. And at the bottom of my chart, you'll see a MACD platinum indicator. It's just a zero lag MACD. It oscillates around the zero level. And generally, I'm looking to sell when it's above the zero level and, and buy when it's below the zero level. But you'll see this all in the charts when I show you, right? So just have a read of that. Take a screenshot, pause the video, do what you have to do. Appreciate that I may speak too fast. Uh, English is not everyone's first language, and I am probably speaking too fast. I've had a big night, and I'm probably just dribbling at the moment. So I apologise for that. My throat's a bit uh, hoarse, as you can probably tell. Also, I'm not feeling 100% at the moment. But anyway, so just have a read of that. And like I said, we'll go through the charts anyway. Let's get on the charts, TradingView. I use TradingView for all my analysis. Doesn't matter what platform you use, it's just easy for me because it's easy to write notes, easy to do screenshots, easy to share trade setups with the TradingView community, etc. And it's also portable because it's web-based, not like MT4, MT5, custom indicators. I can see them on the actual mobile devices or my iPad if I had one. But, you know, stuff like that. So we use TradingView, this is my watch list on the right. It's just a smallish watch list, it's not all 28 pairs. If it's highlighted in orange, it means there's something I want to talk about on this video. If it's highlighted in light blue, it means there's been a trade on, an action taken. If it's no highlight, no trade, uh, dark blue means there is a trade on and no action has been taken as yet. So we'll just go through the list alphabetically. You'll see I normally write notes on the chart. I'll have the, the, the pair name, the date, the signal, then my thoughts on the trade. Then I may add stuff like um, what I've done so far, like trade management or, and the date and what, I, what I've done. These are all called live in my Facebook group and Telegram channels and Matt Fam from Family Man's Discord channel at the time. Take a screenshot of the trade setup. This is not this is not hindsight. I call these every day, as, it, as most of you know. Uh, Everyone is more than welcome to join those Facebook groups, the, oh, the Facebook group, the um, Telegram channels, etc. Yeah, and ask questions, post trade setups, etc. I've got no problems with that at all. So these are all called at the time. I'm not a trade signal service. I can get trades wrong, as we all know. So let's have a look. So this one's got multiple trades on. Now, if you're a serious trader, I know some people can't trade, buy and sell at the same time, especially like if you're in the US. But look, if you're honestly, if you're serious about trading, find a broker that will allow you to do it. It just makes life a lot easier. Trust me on that. It's no big deal if you can't. You can just close out. If you're in a sell trade and a buy trade, just close out one of them. You know, one of them's obviously in profit. Um, so let's have a look here. So OzCAD, here's the cell here. So you can see the cell was taken here. These, this is the red lines. My reasons why I took the cell and what I've done so far, and it has been stopped out. That's why it's highlighted in yellow, because I'm going to explain that to you. It's been stopped out during the week. So uh, 26th of July, it was stopped out. We'd already closed half on the 29th of June. So let's look at the 29th of June. So that's around here, so we close half, stop. So it's a small overall profit on that. So I just leave the trade on the chart to show you that was stopped out. Now we're in a buy, um, so the buy is going all right, and I've moved my stop up to the 29th of July. So let's look at 29th of July, where's that? There's the last one, probably, yeah. You know what, I think I've been stopped out on that too. I have. 
What's that? Eight eight nine eight five low eight eight. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Been stopped in on both trades. So I'm <laughs> I'm actually in no trades in the last can. So there you go. I stopped out on Friday and I spiked down there for a, a winner. Uh, it already closed half on that buy. It was a high risk trade against the trend. Uh, you can see the notes there. Stop was moved. Stop was moved again. Stopped out. Stopped out in the sell. Stopped out in the buy. Winner on both trades. I will we'll tidy up that chart after the video just by removing everything basically. I'll just leave it on there to show you guys as I said. Oh, Jen, highlighting yellow. Must be a reason for that too. And there is. Um, what have we got here? We're still in this buy back here, which is 18th of May, which is good. Stop in place just above the entry. You can read my actions for what I've done there on that trade so far. There's another buy signal here. That was the 15th of July. Um, and I closed half and stopped moved up on the 21st. So it would have been near this high somewhere. Yeah, when I got to this previous high here, Closed out half, moved my stop up, and it's been stopped out. So that buy from the 15th of July is been stopped out. So as I said, I'll leave it on the chance to show you what happened. And we're now in a sell, which is this trade. Normally the, the, the most right notes are my most recent trade. So here's the sell here, based on this nice triple top or big resistance level. Uh, still a high risk trade because the trend's up. Look at the moving averages. But we're, uh, we're going to stop and place up here. And we took the trade in here. It's going nicely. And we have... I uh, should be taking... Uh, nothing yet. Probably be considering taking... I'll, I'll look, on, on Monday or Tuesday, I'll look at taking... Uh, especially before the Aussie employment numbers come out. I'm, I'll probably take half of this off the table and, and tighten up my stop a little bit because it is a high risk trade. We are into the moving averages now. The MACD is just above the zero level still. So we're getting close to taking some action on this trade. But in the meantime, we're still in this buy here, which gives me some protection. This buy has been stopped out and we're on a winning sell trade. So it's all good. But I'll tidy up the chart after I finish the video. Aussie USD. Uh, it's in highlight for in yellow orange too. Must be a reason. I think I know. Um, I sell trade here. Stop there. Look, it's it's very close, and I'm calling it as being stopped out. Um, I think it came in a pip or a half a pip, but that would have got me for sure. So that, and it's at the. This green line is a 70 cent level, which is a big number in the Aussie. And so that's been stopped out the sell. So that's gone. Uh, that's an overall winner, that one. You can read my notes, how I've um, taken close half, etc., moved the stop down. So we're still in this buy, and the stop's been tightened right up close. It's a high risk against the trend type tra trade, and it was taken on a trend line break. You can read the notes for that there. And we're at that 70 cent level also. So with Aussie uh, employment numbers this week and against the high risk trade, against the trend, just, just be careful. So we're, we're nice and tight. We can't lose on that. We had a win on the sell and we can't lose on the buy. So it's it's all good. So there's no, no major drama. It's this grey vertical line. It's a warning signal for a potential... Um, Basically, a red dot above the MACD platinum, above the zero level in the MACD platinum, for me is a, a warning that I'm getting ready to go into sell mode, which would make sense here. Price has gone back to the moving averages and for it to roll over and then take out this low here. That's the plan. So that's the Aussie USD. I'll tidy up the chart after I finish the video. Just leaving that on there to show you it was stopped out. And I think it was like within half a pip or something. Doesn't matter. EuroCAD uh, in a cell, going nowhere fast. I could probably move my stop down a little bit. Um, does my watch always go off during these videos? I don't even know where my watch is. All right. Um, so yeah, we're in, a, we're in a cell from back here, 29th of, July, uh, 29th of June. It's going nicely, stops 
we've already closed half. I looked, yeah, closed half, stopped down. Uh, we've got this warning signal. We've had it for a while. The MACD Platinum's been below the zero level. Actually, we've got a bit of a, um, let's have a look here. We've got a bit of a basic trend line. We've got a bit of a support level here, haven't we, now? So a buy wouldn't be actually a bad, a buy here wouldn't be a bad setup, even though the MACD Platinum's close to zero level. We've got this nice little support level, so if a buy does present, and there was a buy signal here. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I don't know. You could probably you could probably be tempted to take a buy here. You know, there would be nothing wrong with that. Your your buy signal was here. It was it was a trade I was never going to take because it was against the trend at the time, um, and there was no supporting divergence. I did like the fact that there is the MACD platinum was a long way below the zero level. Uh, that was probably one thing in its favour. I, I declined to take it at the time. Now, since we've seen price rise a little bit and drop down and then start the rise again, there is this nice support level here. So you could make an argument now that a buy, especially I've got a partial sell on still, I could probably bring that stop down, say, a little bit below the entry level and take a, a, a lower risk percentage buy there. I might have a look at that on Monday. I'll, I'll get back to you on that if I decide on that, but that's... It's a fairly valid sort of signal in my sort of, I, I like double tops, double bottoms, that sort of stuff. So that's something I, I do look at. So yeah, keep an eye on that. We'll give it, might give it one day and see how we go. Right, Euro Yen highlighting ah, yellow because there's something happened. And what happened? Oh, 27th of July, this buy, this buy I took here, 27th of July, which is on this, open to this candle here. Close my trade out for a small loss. A reverse QMP filter dot. Uh, and it saved me some dollars because it just dropped like a rock and it probably took it, it probably touched my stop there by looks anyway. So it didn't get to the stop. I closed it on the open of this candle. Open this little bullish candle here, closed it on the open there. So I took a very small loss on the Euro Yen. Um, so that's just why I left it on the charts to show and explain what happened there. It did not get to, even though it's probably stopped me out by half a pip or something there, um, it didn't get to there. I closed it out early on that opposite QMP filter dot there. Now this is based on hidden bullish divergence, the initial um, buy trade, which I love. So in some of my other trading, I've just hedged this, which is just normal for me. Um, but I'll be looking for another buy here for sure. At some point, there'll be another buy that will get this MACD Platinum above the zero level. May not be a huge one, but it'll be just about, there's no guarantees, I know that, but I can just about guarantee that I can, <laughs> just said it, didn't I? There's no such thing as a guarantee. I can guarantee I'll probably get her that overall as a winner on some other platforms, but no big deal. So Euro Yen, I'll tidy that up once we're finished. Uh, where else? Euro USD. Now this is a little bit tricky. Um, as you know, we've been in three cells. 14th of Feb, 4th of April, and last one was that 10th of 10th of June. Um, stops for all three are here, so we can't lose in any of those trades. So we're going going good guns on the Euro. We're just wrote, riding the. This is Euro USD. We're just riding this downtrend down. Had a couple of goes at buys um, and failed, but we've the, the the small losses we've taken on the buys have been offset by these these winning trades. Um, there's no probably any reason to move the stop loss as yet. Um, the last thing was this buy here. I didn't take it. it just there was no supporting divergence. It was against the trend. It was just not, it was an ugly setup. We didn't take it. So no, no worries there. Um, and this has been going sideways. Look, this is a daily chart. And he, obviously, there's five trading days in a week in Forex. So that's that's two weeks of basically sideways action. <laughs> so it's pretty boring on the old daily. And, um, you know, and that includes, that includes um, US interest rate news in there too. So that just shows you how boring that was. Okay, so the Euro USD, we're in three cells. We can't, we can't lose on any of them. Uh, and... I have been asked before about the, uh, if I'm concerned about the overnight interest rate um, 
interest rates, the swap rates on the Euro USD on the sell side, it's nothing to what to be concerned about. So it's not an issue at all. Found Aussie in a couple of trades here. Uh, sell from the 30, 30th of June, which is here. Stop and place there. I could probably, nah, not yet. I'll just let it stop where it is. And we've taken a buy just recently on the 29th of July, and the stop for that is just below this low here. Very range bound. Um, as you can see, look at this, look at this support level here. And here's the resistance level, you know, you know, triple bottom, quadruple bottom, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. But, and, it, and like I said, I think I said, I mentioned my, my rant the other day, that, that there's two schools of thoughts on these uh, resistance or support levels. One is the more touches there are, the stronger they become. The other school of thought is, the more touches there are, the weaker they become because eventually they've got to break. Nothing goes sideways forever, does it? So you could make an argument for either. But in the meantime, we've got this big support level here. Like I said, I've taken the buy trade there. I've got already a partial sell on, got some protection. No problems there at all. So it's the pound Aussie. Pound yen highlighted in orange for a reason. Uh, this was one I was stopped out of, I think. Hang on, let's have a look. Yeah, took a buy. <sighs> took a buy here and stopped there for a loss two days later. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Um, it was a second attempt at the same buy. I already taken one here. <laughs> and I closed that one for a loss on the, on a QMP reversal. Then we got another buy signal here, so I thought I might as well have another crack at it. You know, prices at the moving average, the trends up. My concern was obviously this this level here had to break it really to convince me, um, and I, I kept my stop pretty tight and I was stopped out. You can you can read the uh, you can read my notes there. So that that's just a straight out loss, big loss. Not, not when I say big loss, it's a full loss. So that's that's a loss on the pound yen. Damn, we do lose trades surprisingly. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Pound New Zealand, we're going to buy another sideways. A lot of these pound pairs are going sideways. Look at this. These blue lines, they just show you what the market's doing. Here's the buy trade in here. You can read the notes there. Pause the video. There's a stop loss there. MACD platinum's just below the zero level, going nowhere fast. All very sideways. So we just, just grind. It's a grind. So ideally, you want to see price get up towards these highs here. Then they'll take some action. MACD through the zero level may take some action. And we've got UK interest rate news this week. So I've just got to keep a closer eye on the pound pairs. Pound USD, uh, we are in a buy here. And based on this nice support level sort of and divergence, again, you can read my notes here. Uh, I've already closed half. And we've got, we've got closed half, 28th. So we're in here somewhere. So here. When I got to close to the moving averages, it was definitely the MACD through the zero level, touched the moving averages, close half, dragged my stop up nice and tight, cannot lose on this trade. So that's that's good. So that's the pound USD. New Zealand CAD, in a couple of trades here, going nowhere fast in a sell. You can read the notes over there, already closed half, stop, moved down, can't lose on the sell. So that's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, we've got a buy, and all I've done is move my stop up tighter on the buy. That's the only thing I've done so far. It's a high risk trade. High risk trade is trading against that big downtrend. Um, I like the divergence. You can see, you can read my notes there. Uh, I've got a partial sell trade on, give me some protection. And again, this is this is a daily chart for two weeks. It's basically done nothing. So it's New Zealand CAD. USD CAD, I think we're in a sell here, which is good. Uh, you got sort of this big support, uh, sorry, resistance sort of level up here. Uh, got some divergence there. It was a high risk trade. And I've already closed half on the 20th. So let's have a look in 20th. Hopefully it makes me look like a superstar here. Yes. Uh, when the price hit the moving averages, nice time to take half off the table, but then slowly move my stop down, as you can see by my notes. And like I said, these are all called in my trade groups at the time. So these are not after the fact or 
anything like that. Everyone knows what's happening. I call all these, even all the trade management, it's all called at the time. So we can't lose on the USD CAD. That's a good one. That is nice. USD Japanese Yen. Pretty sure I'm going to sell on this also. Uh, all right. So we're going to sell here. High risk trade. Had divergence. I've been watching this one for a while. It's been grinding up. Uh, what have I done? 29th of July. So hopefully it's that one there somewhere. Yes, perfect. Price hit the moving averages, close half, drag my stop there. Can't lose now, can't lose. So that's what you want. That's If you're trading against the trend, you're, you're looking for a reason to tighten up when you can. And generally when price hits a moving average like this, this is just a 50, it doesn't matter what moving average you use. When it hits the moving averages, as a, that is a good time to close, trust me. And as, as you can see from previous examples, just in this video, it work, it's work, works a lot of the time. So we can't lose on the USD Japanese Yen. Let's have a look. Gold, XAU, USD. We're in a sell from back here. This big number here, the green line is the 1,800, 1,800 level, which has been a sticking point for gold. So I've taken a sell. Uh, so you can see my notes here. First stop closed, 8th of July closed up. So let's have a look where the 8th of July down here somewhere, so in here, I've closed half, move my stop down, so we can't lose on the sell at all. Uh, buy, oh, hang on, let me just, let me say, when I say I can't lose, I can if suddenly Monday open and it gaps, huge, huge gaps on the wrong side of the stop loss. Look, it, it doesn't happen that often in, in Forex these days, it used to happen a fair bit back in the back in the day. It doesn't happen that often. Generally, where it closes on Friday, generally it's pretty close to where it happens on Monday. The, the old weekend gap trading is um, is a thing of the past. You know, it still happens, but nowhere near as much as it used to. And this is gold. We've got this big support level down here, which you've seen in previous videos. Uh, I've taken a buy hit here. A bit of divergence. You can read my notes there. Uh, already closed half, MACD through the zero level. So 29th of July, so on the open on Friday, actually closed half, uh, and it continued up, and I dragged my stop up. So I can't lose on the buy, and I can't lose on the sell. That's what you want. That's what you want. Doesn't matter which way it goes now. If it takes out both stops, who cares? I can't lose on either. Uh, if it takes out one stop and keeps on going, then I just a matter of trailing my other stop. So it's all good. That's what you want to see. Right, three other things we look at just weekly is the US dollar. Uh, just to give you an idea where we're at, this is the big baby of the currencies. It it's controls, it's involved in over 70% of the all Forex trading, so it's something to watch. I watch it just to see the system in action. Last trade was a sell, which was there, high risk trade, and that's worked out okay. That one did work. And you can see all the sig trade signals previously. So it's the US dollar. US 500, which is just basically the stock market, and that is on the, the move up. Now, I'd be curious to see how we go here with this sort of level here. It's a previous sort of, it was a support level. You can see it here, and then it became resistance, and we're heading back up towards it now. So if it breaks that, MAs are starting to slowly turn to the upsides of the daily chart. Uh, are we, are we, is the, Bull market finished? Who knows? Who knows? But that's definitely on the rise now. Uh, this is a daily chart we've taken out. We've got now got high highs and high lows. To me, that shows the market could be turning to the upside. So if you've been sitting on the fence, got some cash, and I'm not a financial advisor by any means, so don't listen to me, but it might be time to start considering getting back into stocks if, you, if you've gone to cash, you know, because... Um, that's that to me. That's break this level here. Yeah. Right, Bitcoin. My last one. Bitcoin USD. It's correlated. We've been going sideways for a long time, bounce around the twenty thousand dollar level. Uh, it looks like it's on the move up now too. There is a correlation between the, the Bitcoin and the US stock market for some reason. Um, so if the US stock market goes down, the Bitcoin goes down. And if the US stock market goes up, generally Bitcoin goes up. Not 
completely, not always, but just in gen general terms. So that's it for the video, folks. Uh, like I said, if you do like the video, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, everyone's more than welcome to join any of those JagFX groups. That's the Facebook group, the, uh, what else we got? The Telegram channels and Family Man, Matt, Matt, um, Matt from Family Man Discord channel. Uh, I do post these trade setups also on TradingView, just with their, what do they call their publish or their screenshot tool. And uh, also they are, they do go to a shared folder so everyone can see them and the trade management's called in those groups also. So Sunday here, it's 4.16 p.m. It looks like it's raining outside, as, which just happens all the time in Phnom Penh. I don't know why. It's, I've never been such a rainy city, but it does rain a lot here. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Stay safe, and I'll chat to you good folk during the week sometime. Cheers.